Hello, everybody, everybody, and welcome to Comics News Today. Uh, I'm Chester C. Busby III. Very happy to be here with you as usual. Uh, we have some very interesting things we're going to talk about today. A good set of news, I think. Uh, and of course, we got a great panel here to sit and chat with you as well. Uh, we do appreciate all you guys. I see we got Model in here. Hey, Model, what's going on, dude? Uh, we got Roger uh, in here. We got Kay Blonde. Nice. Uh, we got Lady Celtic Moon. Uh, very nice to have you here, ma'am. Uh, we have Bullet as well, and, it's, and I know more and more will come in. We do appreciate you guys very much. Uh, definitely help us out and hit that share button and uh, let everybody know we are a live stream, so uh, we'd like to have as many people here as uh, we can as possible. But uh, we're also just as equally as happy. We get probably three, four times, sometimes even more viewers after the fact, uh, which is kind of interesting, I, you know, Denali. I, I wouldn't expect that we'd have someone come watch a video for two hours, but they do, or, or most of our videos are an hour actually but i, I wouldn't yeah. expect that but they do we do we get well, quite a bit of that that's kind of cool we're interesting we're interesting we are entertaining are we? all right yes there you or go. we make them fall asleep I, like oh maybe ASMR. i think we're pretty cool maybe we are maybe that's it we're an asmr thing we we, we put people yeah. together we put people to sleep in a sexy way this is a sexy way Ooh, yeah. a sexy sleep this is sexy the sexy sleep channel yeah, mm. there you go. oh mm. 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 Uh, but uh, we appreciate you, you guys sex to fang. sex to fang. yeah absolutely uh, but um, yeah no uh, this is going to be fun today we got some fun things to talk about actually but before we do that uh, we always want to kind of just warm up a little bit and uh, let more people come in here before we dive into the news and uh, actually just before we came on uh, uh, George was asking me or, uh, or making some comments about uh, Japan Japan, me living in Japan, and uh, that might be an interesting little chat. Uh, why don't you go ahead and ask your question, George? Yes, um, there's a underbelly in Japan uh -huh. regarding um, the sex trade, the sex workers, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. They don't they don't openly talk about it, but um, they uh, it actually has affected the Japanese culture and the population because right now the the population is very stagnant and it's actually declining. Yes. So what's what, what's going on there? I mean, is, is this uh, a, a prelude to the destruction of the Japanese culture? Because uh, you know they're all too focused on work and games. Uh, no, uh, I don't think it's. Uh, uh, there is a little bit of a problem here with that, uh, but uh, we're seeing a little bit of shift away from it. Uh, but uh, as far as the sex trading goes, I don't think Japan's any different than anywhere else. Uh, you did initially, initially when you were talking, you meant use the word geisha, uh, and I think that's probably just a Western misconception. People don't understand that geisha has nothing to do with sex whatsoever. Uh, geisha is simply an entertainer. Uh, they're not they're not sex workers at all, uh, and of course that that unfortunately that Saudi um, uh, Diaries of a Geisha movie, uh, it's just the same old Western concept being thrown at it. It's not what a geisha is at all. Now they do have sex workers, of course, and actually here in Japan some things are legal across the country that are not legal in America. They're depending on the area, right? Um, uh, um, and uh, what they have here uh, is they have these kind of places uh, that well, they have red light districts in Japan. Right. I mean, official red light districts and inside those red light districts is where you find the bars and all that kind of stuff. And they have these things called soap lands. Um, and uh, technically, I think the girls are supposed to be using their hands and or mouths only. Uh, but uh, we all know there's nice. certain things that go on in there. Right. Uh, but uh, uh, we do have those kind of things, but I don't think it's um, any different than anywhere else. Matter of fact, I'd say it's more clinical and organized, as is a very Japanese thing to do compared to other places. Hey, we got good dog present here. How's he going, Manny? Aloha, Booster and friends. Aloha. Dude, it's Aloha, Chester and, Bo and Booster and Denali and George and other friends. The Booster That's, and please. Friends show. Thanks a lot, Manny. Aloha, Manny. Thank you, Manny. <laughs> Aloha, you. Manny. The love from me. I see. Yeah. It's kisses. really nice that uh, it's really nice that George just asked that question so politely on here while we're off here. It was just it was mm -hmm. all sorts of awful accents, just insults. It was just it was a nightmare to listen to. Come well, on, that was talking George. about China yeah. though. Of course, when you talk about China, yeah. you definitely have to use a uh, uh, horrible, mean, heart and nasty accents because you know it's <laughs> China, right? China. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, uh, uh, you know, all these damn Democrats all these years throwing all this money and uh, trying to build up China and they didn't bother to understand the culture at all because uh, the, see, the Chinese will always, always try to cheat you first. And you say, well, that doesn't make sense. That's only the bad people doing that. Oh, no, no. It's the entire culture uh, because they believe 
that if you get cheated, it is your fault. You allowed them to cheat you, right? So that makes you a fool. So this is how they think about it. So the fact that they're cheating people all the time, it's just normal. It's part of their culture, you see. And they mock you when you get cheated, and they laugh at you, and they point fingers, right? Uh, this is Chinese culture, and uh, it's like not going to change. China. <laughs> well, I don't you shouldn't buy anything there. from China ever. You shouldn't. Uh, if it's no. some kind of useless little plastic thing you're using for something, that's fine. But if it's if food coming from China, my God, why would you eat that, right? Uh, any kind of product that's coming out of China, you should source and know exactly where your food is coming from, people. Uh, right? I, well, maybe I like the taste of cardboard. <laughs> hey, you saying I shouldn't eat? Go to the Chinese store for food? No, you shouldn't buy anything from China. Chinese ticket. You shouldn't. D d dude, just every single fish and chip store in New Zealand is run by Chinese people. You well, no, they're living in your country and they're sourcing out of your country for the most part. So that's a oh. little different. Uh, but I'm talking about you going buying products from a uh, a Chinese place uh, or a Chinese company that's producing in China. Understand that the, they don't have sanitation. Uh, the American government doesn't do anything. Uh, well, some things they do, but the American government doesn't really regulate them, which is what Trump is trying to do. Uh, but uh, this 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 conversation went very political. Uh, let me see over here. Uh, Adrian says, uh, uh, Bullet says, Adrian's here. Yes. Hello, Adrian. Um, uh, let's see. Bullet says, uh it has been in decline for a long time. Uh, they have a huge elderly population, and men aren't going after women because they think that women expect too much. Uh, this is kind of true. I, I guess I could admit, uh, comment on that in a second. Uh, Good Dog Press says, uh, look at uh, Triggly Bear. Uh, triggered Bear. Okay, at least he didn't call me Triggly Bear because that would have been horrible. That, that would have been that really would bad. Be he's calling you a poo bear? Yeah, no, is that, uh, is that what he's uh, saying? Uh, Triggly puff. That was the joke I was trying to make. Sorry. Uh, but, oh, um, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, I still love you, though, Manny. I love you. You can feel the mm -hmm. love coming mm -hmm. from me. It just it just comes off in waves. Uh, Night Pope mm -hmm. says, "Go booster." <laughs> Ink Spot says, "Hello, everybody." Hey, Ink, what's up, dude? Uh, Eagle forty uh, Eagle forty three says hello and very happy to have you here, dude. Uh, as far as what Bullet said, um, uh, well, here here's the thing in Japan. Um, the, uh, the men have some responsibility for what's going on. Of course, I mean, in the end, men are always responsible. It's it's, well, it's our lot in life, We're right? Awful. Well, no, yeah, because. In the end, if it needs to get fixed or something's broken, it always comes down to us, right? <laughs> uh, it's just what it is, what it is, man. Uh, but um, uh, I would I would say that the biggest trouble in Japan is actually laid on the women more so than the men, uh, although I'm not meant leaving the men blameless. Uh, what's happening is you have these young girls uh, that uh, they, the system here in Japan is absolutely fantastic for getting kids from high school to university to job. They're really efficient at this in Japan. As a matter of fact, I would suggest every country on the planet should be paying attention to exactly how the Japanese do this because they are really great at taking a kid out of high school and getting them into a job, whether it be through the college program, through a trade school, or what have you. They're really, really good at this. And uh, what happens is you have these girls uh, who can get into a job quite easily just with their normal and, and the education system coming from elementary school all the way up through high school is so intense and so strict that they can do anything anyway because they're so hard hardcore educated right um and, and therefore these girls can find good jobs they have money they don't have to worry about being responsible for anybody they can have these happy little lives go and taking their photographs of their little desserts and uh and of course most all of culture has been dedicated to women's stuff as long as we've been all existed uh because as you go to a go to a mall you go anywhere it's all lady stuff men have hardly anything right and that's the way it's always been because women control the money right and japan's no mm -hmm. different um, and uh, this is the real problem. The girls just are having happy little lives and get jobs, no problem. And they're, they're, why should they bother being married with kids? I mean, come on. That's, that's work. That's effort, right? Uh, so in the end, it's this, horrible, it's this horrible situation for us because we can all agree that a woman should have a job. Sure. She could. She should do anything she wanted to do. We all agree with this. But at the same time, we, we can also understand that it would be much better if the women would uh, abstain from doing this and stay home and be a mother. This is what we need women to do. That's what they need to do because otherwise culture fails, and we're seeing it happen all across the Western world. But it's a weird, it's a weird juxta, uh, you know, uh, it's a weird conundrum, right? Because we agree that women should have the freedom to do everything they want to do, but at the same time, they should be being mothers. 
I don't know. It's it's it's. How do you fix it, that? It, how do you fix that? That sounds like some caveman so, philosophy, you <laughs> racist. No, it's the truth, dude. And it's like, how do it's, you fix um, it? Right? Because both so things are true, the, right? So the Japanese is a uh, is basically a victim of their own efficiency. In a way, in a way, <laughs> yeah. But I know You're the Japanese will work it, it out, though. Yeah. And the West will, too. It all work itself out. Matter of fact, uh, this weekend, we saw a whole bunch of uh, interesting things going in the EU elections. Uh, we saw a lot of shift to nationalism. And, of course, that's exactly what you do when you try to push all of this globalism. People don't want that. They, they want their they want to uh, I mean, the, in the end, we're all we're all greedy. We want it selfish. We want to take care of ourselves and our families and such. Uh, so, of course, people are going to move toward nationalism. Speaking of which, a big nationalist push lately uh, for the UK, Italy, and France yeah. all voted right wing. That was really? it. That's what I just mentioned. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, especially yeah. with Nigel Farage, he list he literally said, "All right, screw this crap." Three weeks ago, he said, "All right, I'm doing a campaign. Vote for me, Brexit." He made named his party Brexit, and he got what twenty eight percent of the vote. <laughs> right? <laughs> literally <laughs> three weeks. Thirty four percent. Hmm. Well, he warned them. He said, if you guys don't do the Brexit right, I'm coming for you. That, and, and he, he did was, it. And he did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Happy Memorial Day to you too, Nick. Um, uh, Inkspot says, uh, I let my wife out of the hall closet once, in a, once a day to make my dinner and do laundry. You do realize that what I'm saying is both things are true, right? And that's the conundrum. Because it is true that women should be able to do anything they want to do. Of course, we all agree. But at the same time, what we need women to do is to go and be wives and, and mothers. That's what we need. That's what society needs. But yet the other thing is also true. That's what I'm saying. It's a conundrum. It's a problem, right? Because well, they're both true. I Sister think... admits women are a problem live on air. <laughs> <sighs> uh, he's going to be sleeping outside tonight. <laughs> no, I'm not. My wife agrees 100%. Yeah, uh, but but I think part of it would be because of the new mindset, and that one of the reason is it's not incentivized to be in the house to you know to get married to have kids or anything because as you said it it seems more work when they could be happy doing more things. But if I think if the if it was looked upon that it was a partnership and you share the responsibility where you're mm -hmm. where the women's are not feeling like they're doing everything then i think that will shift back to having more ladies you know get married and look at family life more positive that, that could be one solution but i mean uh we're well beyond the pale of that right uh, we mm -hmm. do have, it is an extreme view uh but you have the leftists that are so bold right now because of their being allowed to be bold that they're out there saying that if you have a baby you are evil and horrible person how dare you have children that's what they're saying that they're saying this openly dude right mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. that is that is what you're up against that's the situation, right? And of course, this is response we saw in uh, in the EU uh, with the voting uh, shows exactly that. But of course, we know what the e what Belgium will do because I understand Belgium controls the EU, and of course, Germany has uh, extreme influence over that uh, as well as a little bit with France. But uh, uh, what they're going to do is they're just going to force votes again because they've done it many times. We've had several votes come out of Ireland and uh, and Poland and other places like that, mm -hmm. and they they didn't like the results. So they say, oh, we got to vote again. Oh, we didn't like the second one. Do it again. Do it again. It's always the bloody Kratzer. Every time something bad is happening in the world, it's because oh, Germany's they, acting up again. They can't get out of their own damn way. Uh, they're sitting there so worried and so so uh, tentative because of the their, their uh, the memory of World War II that they're actually becoming fascists again. <laughs> because they forgot that fascism is socialism, which is Marxism. They forgot. Everyone seems to have forgotten that fascism is socialism. You freaking morons! <laughs> Read a goddamn book, you bastards. They can't. They outlaw reading the whole German Nazi thing. It's illegal to do that. That's why they forgot. Oh, oh whatever. God. I mean, it, but it's funny to me. Yeah. I, I I don't know how funny it'll be when things get violent because they always do uh, from the wow. left. But uh, uh, it, it's it's ironic, I guess. Maybe I should use that word instead. That they are so there so terrified of being Nazis again that they're becoming Nazis again. 
Well, they erase mm -hmm. history, so no one, no one is educated enough to understand that. I, I, I take exception to that comment, George. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. You, are you saying you're ignorant? No, I'm saying quite the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> please elaborate. I'm not ignorant. No, no, I mean elaborate beyond the joke, the pale of the joke. Okay, uh, go beyond the joke. Uh, no, I, I understand the what joke. you guys are saying. It's a, uh, it is a problem. Uh, uh, the uh, EU has becoming uh, very fascistic in many, many ways. Uh, blocking news. If you talk about the wrong thing, you get banned, arrested. Even uh, they've become extreme fascists all across the EU, and this is why you're seeing the this strong nationalistic right wing uh, pushback. Uh, because the people are sick of it. You can't treat people like that and expect them to lay down. They're not going to, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, uh, cool. you know, they got their dogs in Antifa and the Black Bloc uh, that are uh, going out and trying to intimidate people with violence, and it worked for a little while. Uh, but I think the real thing that has kicked this off is you have the Muslims coming in on the back end, right? And uh, the Muslims, uh, they are trying to, these people, these politicians are trying to protect the Muslims and use them and hold them up as an example. But the Muslims are pushing back because they say, hey, you know, uh, no, you can't be a Muslim and gay. You can't. What are you doing? Uh, you know, and, and they're protesting, they're they're doing what they do, they're throwing stones, the cops, I and mean, it's the most disgusting thing I saw just the other day. Tommy Robinson, poor guy, right? I mean, he hasn't done anything worthy of what's coming down on him. If you go and investigate it and study it, it it's disgusting what's yeah. happening. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, they actually had a whole little army of Muslims throwing stones at him and his house and his stuff, and this cop standing right around doing nothing. They're doing nothing because the Muslims are protected. And the fun, and the, the thing is going to come back and bite them hard is the Muslims do not agree with these liberals at all. Because you know what? Being a, a Muslim means you are ultra conservative. You are like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, hardcore conservative, right? Socially, yep. Yeah, in every way, right? Yep. Uh, even economically, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, this is coming apart um, in, in every aspect. And the, the other people are like, hey. You are forcing these foreigners who have different opinions from us uh, in the extreme, not slightly different. Like when the Indians came over, people didn't. Uh, there was a little bit of pushback, but not much because the Indians' value is not so different than a Westerner's value. They're really not, right? But when the Muslims are coming in, especially the incredibly hardly uneducated ones, wherever they're coming out of, and the violence they bring with them, this is terrified people, and they're pushing back hard. And uh, it's interesting. Uh, we've all been watching it little by little, I'm sure. Uh, but the, this uh, past weekend has been a very interesting and eye-opening uh, thing because we're not getting a lot of news out of Europe because of all the shutdown and control of the media. But this election is showing us exactly what the people are thinking. And, of course, I know they're going to make them re-vote uh, again because that's what they keep that's what they do they do it over and over <laughs> they did it to ireland three times uh they kept doing it to poland austria and hungary but then they, those guys like not screw you we're done right and i don't know what ireland's going to do because i mean if you guys recall it wasn't too long ago a few months ago that we saw in ireland they had a vote to bring abortion in because because they're catholic right and uh abortion was illegal in ireland uh, or at least uh, a full abortion was illegal and uh they had a vote that, that made it more kind of like american looking abortion laws uh, and there were people jumping up and down cheering happy clapping for the right to murder a child mm -hmm. I, it was one of the most disgusting things i've ever seen in my life happy about it right excited yeah. right the hell's wrong with you uh but anyway uh there's world news thank you i hope you enjoyed that let's get to comic book news how about that oh yeah what right we're a comic book channel i almost forgot mm. yeah yeah <laughs> uh but uh <laughs> Well, uh, let's start it with this. I'm going to come over here and share. But, uh, uh, you know, I think it's interesting to talk about those things a little bit because, I mean, everyone's paying attention. We all know what's going on, right? Yeah. Um, so it's not like it's it's shocking news, really. Uh, but uh, here you go, Denali. Lead us out, man. All right. So from CBR, uh, DC Comic will stop double shipping books next year. So with the... Oh. <laughs> so yay you stop pitting each other and stop pitting us with all these crappy books but we have to still wait for next year for them to actually start 
Well, I think... they're going to be like, you're welcome. <laughs> we start well, doing that crappy uh, thing we shouldn't have been doing since the beginning. You're yeah, no, welcome. There's a couple little things here I want to read on that. But uh, I Go think ahead. they're making a distinction between what we are calling uh, double shipping, which we know is them over over shipping, I think is the word that uh, comes to my mind. Uh, but double shipping, it seems what they're talking about is they will send the same title twice in a month. Whereas that's normally you don't do that, right? Normally, uh, this Monday we got the, the books for this week, and then next Monday. But they're like uh, they're, they're shipping the same thing more often, uh, and I'm assuming that is not taking into account when a, when the uh, store, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, one of the uh, comic book stores asking for um, you know more more of the title. That's just a reorder, right? That's a different a different word. Uh, right. But, um, uh, the, the, right. Uh, why don't you go ahead and read what uh, Ryan Higgins has to say here, Booster? All right, what have we got? <clears throat> DC told retailers yesterday and told us it's okay to share today that all the double shipping books are going back to single shipping next year. They didn't want to lose the sales of two issues of Batman, so we get both the normal book and BC by King, uh, Batman Catwoman by King, and Batman Robin from Morrison. All right. If Tom is happy, then I'm happy. Oh. I'm glad Tom's happy. I'm glad Tom King's finally happy. Seriously, he needs some therapy. Oh, yeah. Denali, go, go help the poor man out, please. Well, well no, it's do interesting it. what Patrick says here. He says, uh, if Tom is happy, then I'm happy. He'll always produce quality work, uh, no matter what book he's on. But it seems That's clear right. this isn't the direction he wanted to go. Wonder why DC made his choice. Now, that's interesting you say that, because... We, we get on Tom a lot uh, recently because well, he deserves it. Uh, but we also know that Tom King has done some really good work in the past. He, he is right. skilled at what he does, actually. Uh, and He's we've seen this shift. He's just freaking depressed. Well, you know, it started with uh, Miracle Man, I think. Mr. I think Miracle, that's, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Miracle. After, sorry. after around issue six and that damn awful finale, just an absolute waste of a final issue. That just made me feel like I'd wasted my entire time reading everything. Yeah. All right. Uh, Bianca fights the zombies. Cultural Marxism in the Frankfurt School. Wow, that's a deep conversation. Uh, if you want to get into that one, uh, but it's worth looking into because they do affect the world. Uh, Nick W said, "Dumb comics." I agree, Nick. Uh, Bullet says, uh, "Tom yeah. needs a waifu pillow, a waifu body pillow." Um, oh yeah, those are the, the 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 Dutch wife, right? That's what you guys call it. Uh, what do you call it? A waifu pillow? Yes, yes. You should know this. You're you're, you're with the Japs. The Japanese? Uh, yeah, we don't really have those things. Uh, it seems more of a thing that foreigners what? do. I've never seen sure? one here. It might be a Tokyo thing. It might be. It might be. Yeah. Uh, but you do need to keep in mind when it comes to Japan that Tokyo and Japan are yeah. different planets. Yeah. They're not the same, dude. They're, they're not. Japanese culture, to, to be fair, of all the places I've traveled in the world, the easiest comparison to what Japanese culture is like is New England. They're very much yes. like New Englanders. A very, very That's shockingly strange. similar, actually. Tokyo is a weird, crazy place where people do whatever the hell they want. Because Japan, oddly, has a lot of freedom. Uh, even though they don't, it isn't written in, the, in, the, uh, in any kind of constitution or anything like that, uh, for the most part, the Japanese government lets you do what you want to do as long as you're not causing trouble, right? Um, so mm. you're free. And the Japanese don't have any kind of hang-ups with sexuality and those kind of things. Although the average Japanese is quite conservative in that way. Um, but um, Tokyo is a weird place. It is it is odd. So, so, so you're telling us Tokyo is California then? Gotcha. It's uh, not that. It's not. That it's not politically sense. the same. Uh, but uh, it is maybe uh, uh, culturally. Is it California? Similar. We got it. Yeah. Yeah. We or, figured it out. Or maybe more specifically, San Francisco. We busted the code. There you go. But even in that, it is more pocket oriented. There's pockets in Tokyo. The overall Tokyo is a very gray, bland, uh, boring place. That's Tokyo. But there's little pockets in Tokyo that have this this insanity going on in it, like uh, uh, Akihabara or uh, or uh, uh, Kabukicho or, or places like that, right? Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, interesting <laughs> article. Thank you, DC, for stopping to doing nonsense. Mm, good for we you. We got to praise them when they do something smart. All right, yeah. fine. It doesn't feel... 
it doesn't feel as praiseworthy when they shouldn't have been doing it in the first place. I'm not going to thank a guy for because he stopped punching my face. Right, 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 right. right. I agree. Uh, but you know what? It's been 30 minutes, and we need to pick me up. I need to pick me up. You know, you want, yeah. you want to pick me up, so, uh, George? I, I like being picked up. I know you do, dude. Uh, we're going to do a pick me up. I'm definitely think it's time. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Keanu Reeves shooting stuff. Here we go. I like that. Get him, Keanu. Shooter ready. Stand by. Choo choo. Is that the deadly AR 15 I've been hearing all sorts about? The absolute man killer of a gun. Super it's fully actually, automatic. It's more of a cheap thing that's not, uh, yeah. I, I know that's a joke. Yeah. So this brings a whole new meaning to doing your own stunts. I can't really start a stunt then, but uh. But if you've got an action movie where you can get stars to. They can shoot themselves, you know? Do all the action bits themselves, yeah, you gotta. It's good. Now, now what's amazing is doing. getting all the targets within 10 seconds. Yeah, no, this is a standard thing people do. It's a kind of a hobby, right? A sport, even, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, but uh, yeah, Keanu's doing the one handed one. Um, he seems to enjoy it too, huh? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He got the bug after the Matrix. Oh, did he? Okay. Oh, yeah. He's not bad, at, at, actually, dude. I've seen more accurate and, and faster, but for a Hollywood actor, I'd say he's freaking awesome, dude. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's a treasure, isn't he? He is, man. I like you. And it's just good to see some movies come out that is just unapologetic gun porn. That is a that that look at the kick on that gun, dude. <laughs> Stand by. Awesome. Oh, I don't think I've seen him miss flat. many. When he took the uh, when he took oh, the uh, light automatic and was shooting at distance, he missed it's a little awesome. bit. But uh, they were flawless. I had a little stumble. Who is this wee thing? Wait, go back to it. I maybe it's his trainers. girl. Perfect. Nice. Or maybe she's just a shooting trainer. I don't know. She's very happy to be next to Keanu. You could tell that she was all perky and stuff. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me go oh, back oh. and show the perky. Okay, no, it's all right. That was, awesome. that was raging, Keanu. Hey, Haley's there with him. When you see her up against the other girls, Keanu, man, you were just. There's ladies there for you, Keanu. They are there. Oh, yeah. Look at her. Look at her. She's, she's all perky. You're never satisfied, uh, but I, when, you, when you're that good, you have to be satisfied. I didn't deflate, I went out of order. It doesn't matter. You got beautiful. the guy behind you first. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You hit the know what's going on right now. He's humble, dude. Look at that. Thank you. <laughs> we have an alpha male with a gun shooting <laughs> with a bunch of ladies. Yes, dude. Them. And they are yes. all happy. <laughs> what, are, what year is it again? Uh, what 2011, year is it? I guess. <laughs> I was going to go back and oh, no. on that, but hey, jeez. Wow. You know, it's interesting. He's not center mass on everything, but uh, uh, he is at least hitting the target almost 100%. That's why he double taps. I didn't know double that tap. gun shop girls dressed so sexily. I think we need to go to gun. We need to go to gun ranges more often, dude. Yeah. 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 Big trip. Yeah. I mean, I mean, my local gun range also gives milkshakes, so you know. Wow. Hot oh. girls, milkshakes, and firing. Guns better, no better Where's place a, to be. Where's Miss Holly Berry? I believe she has a shooting range as well. Uh, yeah, she was there with him. She was probably doing it too, but that's okay. Uh, you know, to be fair yeah. though, although I do not, I do not confirm that I have seen uh, John Wick three because it doesn't come out here in Japan till October. Uh, but I, you know, I may or may not have seen it, and, uh, and if I have or have not seen it, I would say that Haley Berry is freaking awesome in that movie, dude. <laughs> she, does, she does a great job, and I've also she seen. Um, on the shooting range. Great job. Chester, have you changed your mind on Haley Berry? I've never been a, a, a hater of Haley Berry. I think um, she's fairly kind of mediocre actress, but she does her job. I've had a couple things I liked her in, but uh, I've never mm -hmm. seen her anything where she. This is the best movie I've ever seen her in. Easy. Absolutely. The acting is good. The action is amazing. 
She does a great job in, in John Wick 3. Yep. Great job. Her and her dogs just kick ass. They do. And what I appreciate it is that she doesn't she doesn't take up space, right? She doesn't take over the movie. Nope. She's in for like an arc. She does a kick ass fight scene, then she's gone. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's back to being John Wick again. Yeah, no, it's, it's a job. It's exactly as it should be. Uh, she is a wonderful job. I love the movie's wonderful. It is different than the other two. The other two are like I, I think I said this already, but the the other two, uh, John Wick one and two, they're kind of like events the way that they feel. Where John Wick three is an actual movie, but it's a really good one though. I really enjoyed uh, John Wick three. My wife too. We had uh, if I if I've seen it, I may or may not have seen it. I, I, I do protest. Uh, but uh, let's see here. Model 3 says, I'm taking Kat to do that when she comes to America. Uh, okay, dude. <laughs> All right. I, I would love to see Kat shooting a gun and screaming every three seconds. It'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the evil, uh, evil man, but <laughs> this is going to be funny. Yeah. Actually, when, uh, you know, I've done a lot of shooting things in my life. Mm-hmm. Well, I do. I grew up with a hunting family, right? Of course, most of the time, I mean, I've shot plenty of uh, shotguns and uh, pistols and stuff, but mainly I was more of a bow hunter. That was more fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, but I, I I have done a lot of shooting uh, my family. Uh, but um, uh, the interesting thing was is her family uh, came over uh, when we were living in Hawaii about 20 years ago. And uh, <clears throat> they came over because uh, her older brother wanted to get married in Hawaii. A lot of Japanese do that. They'll travel to Hawaii for their wedding ceremony. Um, and, uh, it was cool. It was beautiful. Uh, it was, uh, you know, a nice little thing. Uh, of course it's, it's kind of expensive from an American's point of view for, but for a Japanese, it's, uh, it's actually kind of cheaper, oddly enough. Uh, but, um, uh, one of the things that they wanted to do, uh, the two brothers particularly, cause they brought the whole family over, uh, the two brothers, uh, said, we want to go shoot a gun. I was like, uh, okay. Uh, so I dug out, uh, a, a gun range down in, uh, Waikiki. And uh, I took the entire family uh, to have him go and shooting, and it was funny because you know I, I let off a, a, a few a, a few clips, but uh, uh, mainly I was just kind of watching them do it and uh, <laughs> just seeing them react to you know having a gun you know engage uh, with in your hand for the first time. It was it was a lot of fun actually. Have you guys ever shot a gun at all? Yes. Yeah, yeah, plenty. You have. I, I, I thought New Zealand was like the anti-gun place. No, no, not at all. You know, I only recently learned about this because, you know, recently with our shooting, right, there was a call to turn in guns, and 37 people uh, turned in their firearms out of about 1 million firearms that are in New Zealand. And of a country of about 4 million people, that's a lot of guns. It is, but, I mean, guns are a very useful tool. Uh, we use them yeah, for a yeah. lot of things, and the, like the last thing we use them for is murder, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, we have all sorts of guns, but um, mm-hmm. we have a shooting once in a blue moon over here. Holy cow! Model Three says booster shooting range is a mosque. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Yes, I I saw Oof. that uh, too soon. Too soon, eh? <laughs> too soon. I don't know if it's too soon. Uh, no, but, uh, uh, <laughs> um, uh, let, let me see here. Uh, I just saw something I thought was interesting. Uh, yeah, Bullet said, uh, you can buy cans of beer and vending machines on the street. Lol, yes, you can. Here in Japan, the vending machines have beer. Mm-hmm. And you know the, th- the cool thing about it? Uh, the, the, the Only the people who are allowed to buy beer buy beer. The kids don't go around, sneak up to the vending machine and buy beer. That's Japan. Isn't that awesome? That would not work in in New Zealand or America. Uh, the kids would be drunk all the time. Oh yeah, oh yeah, big time. <laughs> Japan is an interesting place, right? I can literally take my wallet and I could put like say a thousand bucks in it, right? I take my wallet and I could put it on a park bench and walk away. That wallet will come back to me within a few days with all the money <laughs> you mean, inside. You mean your wallets uh, have a homing device? No. Uh, what I'm saying is someone will find it, they will take it to the police, and they will get it back to me, and there will not be a penny out of it. Seriously. That's Japan. Right? Uh, and that's just an extreme funny. example, but it applies everywhere. Uh, it applies to, do you have to lock your doors? No, you don't. 
right? Uh, 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 if uh, like they have little things here in Japan all over the place, you have these little farmers because I live in the countryside. So you have these farmers and they'll sell, you know, most of their sales are for commercial or, or, or various things, but they'll take some of their, their crop and they'll put it in these little uh, like uh, roadside kiosks. Right. And they'll just have mm-hmm. tomatoes or strawberries or, or oranges, or whatever, whatever it is they have, they have in there. And there's nobody there. They just it's all sitting out in the in the kiosk and there's a little money box and everything is, is is shows you exactly how much it costs. You come pick it up, you drop your money and you go. They you can do that in Japan. Right. You can't do that in America. I mean, you can't even park your car in some places without losing tires and hubcaps, right? Um, it's a, well, I don't think they use hubcaps as much as they used to, but, but you know what I mean. I mean, that's one of the cool things about Japan, dude. It's that type of place, right? So, I just made everybody sad. I apologize. Wow, did I lose my entire, did someone get kicked off or something? Let me come back over here and see what's going on. No, I'm, I'm all right. No, no. no just, let's move we on. Talk, let's yeah. move. Okay. We're just reflecting on how much you hate you. How much you hate me. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. this this will make you feel better because we can hate on this guy a little bit. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, let's, let's. Let's. Yes, from the Associated Press. Stanley, former manager arrested on elder abuse, mm-hmm. fraud, um, kidnapping, holding oh, an oh, elder oh, against oh. his limits, mm-hmm. and much, much more. Forgery. Yeah. Yep. embezzlement death took him long enough didn't it yep. yeah took him well. yep. uh but yeah no this is an absolute scumbag and i, I was talking to uh we all know this but uh, i was talking to uh Denali before and uh mm-hmm. it's just interesting to me how dumb this uh kia morgan is this is kia morgan here on the left if you don't know uh and he was uh associated with uh, stan for a while but he really started taking advantage advantage of stan particularly when i think because deme- toward the end i think uh, stan's uh, uh had a bit of dementia that was coming into him right we could all kind of tell um and um uh but uh, he started taking hardcore advantage of him and trying to make money off it because he knew he was getting close to death and he was just trying to you know make money is what he was trying to do uh but here's the thing how dumb are you? I mean, Stan Lee is a legitimate, a legitimate American icon. I mean, how many legitimate American icons do we have? Not a lot, right? I mean, who, I mean, he passed away recently. You know, rest in peace, there, Stan. But uh, what other living uh, icons do we have? Arnold Schwarzenegger, maybe. Anybody else? No. Um. Uh, Neil Adam. Oh God, shoot! I said America, um, but um. Uh, but anyway, this is an actual icon that everyone pays attention to. That a lot of people, thousands, if not millions, of people have deep love for. And you're you think you're going to get away with cheating this guy? I mean, that's stupid. That's straight up stupid, or just incredible levels of hubris. I don't know. Yeah, but the silly thing is, they do this after. I mean, that's that's crazy. Well, they were. This- they were working on it before. I think they just had to make sure they had all the evidence. But I'm I'm happy. Uh, we'll see what happens with this. And actually, if you, I mean, we'll we'll keep in touch with this as we we always try to do. But if you really want to know an in depth and understanding of what uh, uh, what this uh, uh, this Morgan guy did, this Kia Morgan did, uh, go over to Jeremy's channel on the quartering. Uh, he yeah. he did a really good coverage of this story actually. So definitely, if you're interested hmm. in that, go check that out. Uh, Tank Eagle Ferret, hello, says, sir. Uh, Eagle 43 says Clint Eastwood for American icons, right? Yeah, no, Clint Eastwood, yeah, right? We, big, we have some. Yeah, but, that's a I big mean, one. How in the world do but you go to... in comics, cheat? though? Oh, no, in it's comics, just Stan. Just Stan Lee, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, and wasn't there also other little weird things happening with with his daughter or ex-wife, allegedly? I can't recall at all. Or was no, it no, all just his, this not, guy? His, no. not his ex-wife. He didn't have an ex-wife, dude. Uh, yeah. His oh, daughter. Yeah. Wife? yeah. Go ahead. Now, we don't know exactly what went on with the daughter. Uh, I think there was a bit of shenanigans going on with her. Uh, it's, I don't know if it's as bad as we were led to believe, or maybe it's even worse. I don't know. Uh, but there was definitely some shenanigans going on with his daughter, for sure. But the Kia Morgan guy, this is the dude who was really doing the majority of it. And he, he, I, hope, I hope he goes to jail for it, because it's nonsense to do to anybody, let alone Stan Lee, right? Uh, but uh, right. let me see here. Like I said, Tank Ferret, nice to see you. Dude, you do have access to the link. You could come in and say hello to us. I don't know what you're doing there, country boy. Uh, model. He, he just shy. has a bad mic. He has a bad mic and he doesn't want to come in. 
Well, fine. I don't. I think it's because they don't love us. To be Blame honest, the technology. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think yeah. that's what it yeah. is. Booster, yeah. yeah, I think it's what it is. Yeah. Uh, Bianca Scumbag. fights the zombies. In a hundred years, Japan will be Japanese. In a hundred years, Western Europe will be Islamic. Uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I think it gets to a certain level that you're going to get. You're starting to see this pushback, and I have a feeling uh, uh, we'll we'll see it slow down. Uh, and if they keep pushing too hard, we could even see civil war. I mean, it's not outside of uh, possibility, actually. Uh, but uh, we'll see what happens. But no, Jap Japan is Japan. That's true. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, the cool thing about it is because they do have, I mean, Japan has ridiculous immigration uh, rules, right? Now, they do have worker visas, but those are temporary and they cannot be, they're not allowed to become permanent. And it depends on the country. Some countries have access to longer ones. Like, for instance, uh, if you're coming from Australia, uh, I think there's like a two or three year visa you can get. Right. Uh, I don't know what the one is from New Zealand, but it depends on your country how long they'll let you stay in the country. But it is temporary. You're not going to be here forever. Right. Uh, it's very strict. Um, even me, uh, uh, even myself, uh, who uh, married a Japanese, I, I have I'm a permanent resident now. I have I have, a, in essence, a green card, I guess, uh, or the Japanese equivalent. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, it took a lot. And I'm married to a Japanese and I had to go through all kind of hoops, dude ridiculous kind of hoops because in the end japan doesn't want foreigners in their country they've always been xenophobic uh, uh but they know they can't live that way they have to be part of the modern world and uh the interesting thing that really pisses me off about japan like i will never become a japanese citizen because uh, if i try to become a japanese citizen i have to i have to denounce my american citizenship which i would one would never do <laughs> right really yes uh how, but how do you, also how do you denounce that like what well, you can so you, you can you can give away your citizenship uh, but then I would also have to change my name so that it could be written in kanji, which means that I would have to take a Japanese name. I'd literally have to change my name. Uh, in Japan, for instance, my children cannot t actually officially do not have my name. They have my wife's Japanese name because you cannot be a Japanese citizen if your name cannot be written in kanji which is the characters, not the hiragana, not the, the little uh, kind of alphabet type thing they have. Um, so, you know, this is Japan, straight up. And these are old, like, Edo time rules, like back with Tokugawa and stuff like that, uh, that they haven't changed. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, in 100 years, Japan will certainly be Japanese. <laughs> no question. In Japan, heart surgeon number one. Yeah, no, actually, uh, that's an interesting comment you make, Nick. Uh, in this, uh, well, the city that's over the mountain from me, I live in a little village, but in the city over the mountain from me, uh, there, uh, and some of my students are actually, they came in to my school because they needed to go to California to do lectures. So they wanted to make sure their, their, their English was perfect and they wanted to train their sound and, you know, that typical stuff you do in an English school. Uh, but those guys... When it comes to stint technology, uh, which is a little little kind of a, a surgical metal, you know, titanium little um, bands they put in to open your veins and all that kind of uh, that kind of surgery, they are literally the best in the world at it, and they're right in this this city right right near me, right. Uh, so that's an interesting comment you make because, uh, yeah, that's true. Chester Chester Buzz uh, Buzz Beru. No, I would have to go way deeper than that, dude. Chester Buzzbear. Anyway, Key Morgan, Sorry. go to hell, you bastard. All right, how about this one, uh, Denali? All right. So from <laughs> this trash website, um, Asian and Asian <laughs> American superheroes are getting their own Marvel comics, the new Agents of Atlas, which wasn't all Asians. It wasn't. In, it had one beginning. Asian. Yeah, I like the Asian yeah, style one. Atlas though. I have that. Uh, I have the entire yeah. uh, omnibus actually. All right. Mm -hmm. So you got all the all new, all different characters that people hated into one comic book. Well, uh, let's, let's take a look at this book right here. We have Agents of Atlas. It's the new one, number one. Okay. Uh, now, mm -hmm. this uh, Chen guy right here, uh, he was in Agents of Atlas. He was created for that book right. actually. Uh, yeah. So he's he's obviously should be there uh we have silk who i don't know that she has any connection whatever to it um i think this character was handled poorly because i think it could have been a cool character who's this right. um, who is this uh blue character behind silk i, I don't know this character uh, give me a second yeah, I'm I, I don't know any of these characters i know silk i know bro hulk i know chen 
Um, I don't know anything else. What, what are, who are these characters, Booster? None of these people are Daredevil, so I can't no. help you <laughs> out. That's true. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. If, uh, it's, but, if it's not DC and it's not Daredevil, I, I don't know what to tell you. And uh, they all look terrible and they, just immensely gay. Well, I they, don't know what to say. <laughs> they well, just all look really gay. Well, the cover art is not good. It is not. If you, I mean, the, the colorist is better than the artist here. Uh, we can see that very clearly uh, uh, because this is not solid art. But then again, this is probably cover A, right? Uh, and we know that they Which... put out kind of crap covers for A so that they have to push right. the stores to get the better covers with these all cover crap that they've been doing. And the store has been asking for years to stop it, right? But this is not good art on this at all. But the coloring is solid, right. so it helps it a little so bit. She's, so she's uh, Arrow. Huh? That's that's the name. Arrow. The blue arrow. <sighs> Braun. <laughs> What's the little girl with way too much clothing on? Crescent and Io. The Okay. The bears Io. Magical I have, bear. I have no idea clue. Are these been around or are they just new created characters for this book? Some of these are new create create uh characters. The one in the forefront, uh with the golden band, that's uh, Shanghai. Master oh, that Kung chick Fu. with the on the yeah, right Shang there, in the middle right, she's showing a bit Shang of midriff. Yeah. Oh, we're getting a little risque, Marvel. Don't get uh -oh. too crazy. Uh oh, uh oh, uh -oh. Uh, oh my um, goodness, uh, a yeah, fourteen-year-old no. might be feeling things. Goodness. Uh, Eagle forty-three uh, says, "Are they Big Hero Six? No, I mean I would recognize uh, some of them if it was Big Hero Six, uh, but um." Uh, you know, the interesting thing here, uh, what Joshua says is, I think it makes sense that they're mostly Asian because I think it's set in Asia. Well, that's fine. I, I don't think, does anybody have trouble with an Asian-based book? I don't. I have no problem no. at all. Especially if there's uh, new characters. Really I hope they're good. Right? Yeah. We've been asking yeah. for this, right? You know, I, I, unfortunately, we I mean, do know there's there's progressive politics behind it because that's what they, how they think, but. You know, ahead, if they want to have progressive uh, bloody politics, they can do it. Fine. Keep it in your own damn books. And so that's what we got here. They uh, made their own bloody new progressive team. Mm -hmm. They shoved them all off in the new thing. Fine. Good. Good riddance. Keep them out of my books. Keep them. Which is Daredevil. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Bullet says, uh, when Jeff Parker uh, first brought back Atlas, uh, Agents of Atlas, it was great. Yes, it was, dude. That's why I, that's why I own the Omnibus. I love Agents of Atlas. I think it's a fun book, dude. Uh, and it puts together some very eclectic and weird combination of a team, too. Um, and uh, But Nick W. does have a good point. And, and this is something we're seeing going on, too, Nick. It's, it's very fascinating. What happened to segregation never, integration now? We're seeing a lot of segregation coming out of the liberals, actually. It's weird. They made so much noise fighting for uh, desegregation uh, segregation in the 60s, so much that it actually destroyed a lot of communities and schools, in, particularly in the South, because that was their intention, because, you know, the North is still not over trying to hurt the South. You know, understand that. That is true true uh but um uh yeah i don't get it because they they love segre segregation now they love it so it's weird yeah i don't know we know lefties are weird i'll never i'll never understand them honestly yeah and you're uh, right they're, they're a strange folk they are they're they're hard for us to comprehend uh bullet says the original team of uh nemora <laughs> venus um, I don't call that. They call it Venus or Aphrodite. But uh, you're probably right. Uh, Marvel Boy, yeah, Marvel Boy, uh, the Iranian, uh, Gorilla Man, awesome. M11, the Human Robot, and Jimmy Woo. Is it Jimmy Woo? I thought it was Chen. But you no, might be Jimmy right. Woo. Oh, okay, I was wrong. I thought it was Chen. Um, but um, anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, so I don't know why it's all Asian now. Maybe they just sent uh, Woo. Uh, over to Asia to create a new team, and, and he brought a couple of Americans with him. Maybe I don't know. Maybe that's what they're doing. We'll see if it's good. Asian American. Well, yeah. well, Asian Americans, right? Uh, but some of these are Asians, right. it said, right? Uh, but if they if yeah. it's well written and well drawn or well il il illustrated, I think it'll be fine. Um, uh, at least two of them are from Marvel Future Fight phone game. Interesting. Uh, the South shall rise uh, again. <laughs> well, dude. Uh, the North has never stopped uh, after Reconstruction. They have never stopped trying to put it on the South. They are, they they have never stopped, dude. 
Uh, it's nonsense, but it is what it is. You would think we'd be past that 170 years on or 160 years on, but guess not. Uh, anyway, move on. Moving on. I, the we'll North to... remembers, Chester. The North remembers. I think the South remembers too. Uh, but anyway, uh, oh uh, my God, Denali. Oh my God. He didn't get it. I, I got it. I got it, Denali. All right. So from CBR again. So Ridley Scott is got the green light to develop his third Alien prequel from Disney because it's going to be under the Fox label where they can do their adult rated <clears throat> show. I mean, mm-hmm. and I mean, Disney pretty much threw away Miramax, you know, because it's no longer relevant compared that to one. Fox. That makes sense though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I think the main question here, and I think we should start with George for this, uh, but let me just respond to something real quick from the chat. Uh, Model 3 says, uh, the South is ready uh, for the next dust up, the dust up. And those Yankee uh, Yankee fruits aren't going home this time. Well, dude, let me, let me, let, let me uh, educate you a little bit here, Model. Uh, first of all, uh, do not associate a true Yankee <clears throat> like myself uh, with the bastards in New York City. Okay? Don't do that, dude. We Yankees are not New York. They stole the name for their baseball team, but they ain't Yankees. We are the damn Yankees. Okay, just so you know. All right, anyway, uh, George, Ridley Scott, Alien prequel. Mm, What do you think, dude? Uh, Those words went together well uh, recently. Mm, Well, I'll I'll tell you, it's uh, very simple. Um, uh, Ridley Scott. He produced what Prometheus and what was the last two covenant. films called? Covenant. Co- a covenant. A covenant. Covenant. Was the Alien last Covenant. One. And the last one was Prometheus. Before that. Yes. Right. He directed and. And of yeah. course, okay. he did the original Alien as well. Uh, Aliens was done by James Cameron, although I think Ridley might have been a producer on it. Uh, and okay. then all the nonsense in between, I'm not really sure. All right. So before Prometheus came out, I I came across because I was working in the film industry, the actual overall arc of the three films that he was planning. I didn't really pay much attention to it. I did read it and I remembered it. And when Prometheus came out, I go, oh, okay. Um, it's exactly what I read in the uh, the paragraph. And when Covenant came out, I go, wow, look at that. You know, it's right on. And now that the third film is coming out, I know exactly what's going to happen. And uh, it's going to really upset a lot of people. Uh, so might... just tell us. So just tell us so we don't have to waste our money. <clears throat> it, it has to do with time travel. Uh, I... the, okay. There's going to be there's going to there's going to be a race to save humanity, and eventually. Um, what's going to happen is they're going to loop back to the very first scene in Prometheus where the aliens come and uh, put the plant their seed into the water of Earth. Okay. Well, maybe. <clears throat> I don't think so. Uh, and uh, planting seed made Booster all excited. Uh, but um, I, I think the general concept, though, though George, is this. Uh, alien was good. Although I think a lot of people kind of agree that uh, uh, Ridley Scott is much more of a cinematographer than he is an actual director. Uh, he's one of the most overrated P- uh, directors in Hollywood history, if you ask me. Although M. Night Shyamalan certainly gives him a run for his money. Uh, but um, uh, Prometheus was not good. Uh, uh, Alien Covenant was not good. They were convoluted. They contradicted themselves. Uh, it was an absolute mess. They were gorgeous, though. They were gorgeous because that's what Ridley Scott does really well. He makes a beautiful, beautiful product. Uh, that's what I think anyway. I, I have no anticipation or excitement whatsoever. I mean, Ridley has proven to me very clearly that uh, he's not all the hype, dude. He's not what he's uh, hyped up to be. Well, you know, he did make a great Gladiator movie. Really? You talk about Uh-oh. Gladiator? Yeah. Yeah, oh, no. uh, are we going to have like a 10 minute rant about how Gladiator is historically inaccurate? Is that what's going to happen? Nope. Yep. I actually like Gladiator. Oh, thank God. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, moving on. Moving on. 
uh, yeah, no, I, I th would think uh, actually what the prequel would would be uh, if they're going to try to pay attention to anything they've done so far, which you never know, uh, would simply be uh, since it's a prequel. Uh, you would think it would be them uh, finding and discovering the alien for the first time. You know, the uh, uh, the Whalen uh, Corporation. Uh, it would be the their their first discovery because Alien they were sent out there intentionally to try to retrieve it. So they already knew about it, right? So uh, and we saw that in Predator and Aliens as well. They had uh, they had had some interaction with it there. So uh, I'm assuming we're going to see Wayland uh, uh, on on the planet where they uh, uh, they first interact with it because uh, the where we find the uh, alien uh, being constructed in Prometheus it isn't necessarily where they made it they're not clear about that right uh, but it might have been where they constructed it but um, uh, of course that never made it back to earth because it got uh, you know David and all the things he did uh, so I have a feeling where it's going to be Wayland's first interaction with the alien is what we're going to see Right. Well, you know what would be really cool if they if they do this for the third Alien movie, it will be great. Is that they bring uh, Alien into the uh, the world of Blade Runner, and, and they would knock it out of the park at that point. It will be nostalgia all around. It might be. And uh, uh, our Bill is over here. Argos Creation is saying, I would like to see the initial the initial mission of the Space Marines. That might be cool, dude. Uh, Hughes News says exclusive inside information from George Gatzis. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Bill continues by saying, or had said before, model watch is gone with the wind while uh, polishing his bullets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, now, uh, Bill, uh, the first thing Bill here said, I said, I think it was actually a pretty cool statement. Uh, he says the original team, we're talking about uh, the uh, agents of Atlas, uh, the original team was the uh, the timely characters from the 50s, yes. Uh, the premise was uh, they were uh, retroactively always active as Marvel Universe uh, uh, Black Ops. Uh, this looks more, uh, uh, more like virtual signaling. You're probably right dude you're probably right uh but we'll certainly give it the benefit of the, the doubt as we always do uh but um and, you know i hope they don't screw it up because i'm actually a fan of that i know it's obscure uh, a lot of people don't know it so much so well but uh i like it so i hope they don't screw it up, screw it up too bad um let me see uh, <laughs> eagle 43 says keep away from blade runner uh one bad movie is enough uh-oh 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 those fighting words, dude. Uh, Bullet says, keep Alien away from Blade Runner. Oh, he's just reiterating what uh, uh, Eagle says. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with you because Hollywood can't do the job right half the time. Uh, well, 90% of the time. Uh, if it was done right, though, it could be interesting. Yeah, but you know what? If they do bring Blade Runner and Alien together, chances are we're going to get 14 different cuts uh, uh, at the end of it. Well, now you're just good. Now you're just starting to get into this, uh, more of the complaints about Ridley Scott, though, uh, because he can't finish a damn movie. He's always uh, uh, overcutting things and stuff like that. And I understand that's a bit sacrilege, but it's the truth. I mean, Alien was a great movie. It really is. And it might even be my favorite uh, of all the series, to be honest with you, although Aliens does kick butt. Uh, but um, Ridley Scott has got is it, it has trouble, man. He's 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 got problems. Uh, but anyway, Alien was just a happy mistake. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Uh, but um, and it was a wonderful one too. You know the thing about Alien was, uh, it, it no one wanted it, no one wanted to touch it, right? Um, and uh, it, it barely ended up getting made. Uh, but uh, it, what a mistake! You know, we've seen a lot of uh, monumental mistakes like that. Uh, yeah, we would have to give stuff. thanks to uh, Star Wars. Oh yeah, maybe, uh, maybe Star Wars. No, no, no. That, that, yeah. That's 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 what it is. Because, no, like you said, nobody wanted to touch it. But when yeah. Star Wars went mega blockbuster bang out, then Fox was like, we have this property. We got to use it. Yeah. yeah, maybe. There you go. Makes good sense. I agree. Uh, but, you know, of course, Star Wars is another huge debacle that t t took place with that. Oh. Uh, George Lucas was going around pushing his because uh, he wanted to sell, you know, toys from the beginning. It was kind of his whole inception. And he tried. He took that to every toy company. They all said, nope, don't want it. Not interested, not interested, not interested. And it's finally Kenner that picked it up. Boy, what a stupid mistake that was on the rest of them. huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. kicking themselves. Oh, yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, we'll see. I don't know. This one right here is very, 
very worrisome. Now, this is actually from one of our um, uh, members on the uh, FanSpeak Facebook group. Uh, 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 mm-hmm. I think his name was uh, Fahad. Uh, I'd have to go over and check it. I probably butchered that name. But uh, thank you very much, sir, for throwing this up. And this, of course, is coming from Geek Geek the Movies, which is a very cool site. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it, it, this is interesting news, but it's also very worrying because this is tied in to the Game of Thrones debacle, Denali. <laughs> so, basically, what the article is saying is that the next trilogy by Benny Weiss and uh, the end are going to be the Knights of the Old Republic trilogy. Yeah. So, and since the showrunners show that they can adapt something well, that's awesome. But when they have to make their own stories, yeah. we don't know. <laughs> it's zero. And it and the last two seasons of Game of Thrones, these especially the last season of the Game of Thrones, they completely fell on their face. They did. They did. And uh, and therefore, that's where the question comes up, right, Danelli? I mean, what we mm-hmm. need here is uh, if those guys have a solid script and a solid uh, storytelling crew and they're allowed to make sure it looks beautiful, it will be awesome because they're really good at that. Well, but as Denali had said, and we, we all can see now that from what has happened, uh, that they cannot write or do a thing on their own. They should not be living, uh, given the ability to make the story. They should just produce the story and, and, and film it, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if that is done, it could be great, mm. right? But remember, they have to write the scripts from scratch. Well, I don't think they should write the scripts at all. I think we, we've, we've seen very clearly they should not be allowed to do that. But that's right. something that what uh, Kathleen Kennedy was saying, that they were writing the scripts. All right. Well, then they're screwing up uh, because oh, and this yeah, thing no. that kills me, right? Because we have a lot, and the same thing with Star Trek. You say make the same comment. There's a lot of really, really good fiction uh, around Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Really well written, great stories, great ideas. Uh, and if you take those great ideas and you just work them into a uh, you know a movie setting. Uh, you you could have a, a big hit on your hands, uh, but but the, but the, this is this is worrying because I'm telling you, it, uh, when uh, episode nine comes out, it, it's it'll make its money of course, but it, it, no matter how good it is, it's not going mm. to fix the situation. It's not going to. It's already ruined, right? But if we have a new thing, a new restart, it could bring some momentum back for Star Wars. But if they screw this up, it's dead. It's done. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm serious. So and um. And Nick says, Chester, it won't be great. Well, that's the worry, right, dude? And you're right, Bullet. Those two KOTOR games were absolutely awesome, dude. They were a lot of fun. I love playing mm-hmm. those games. I actually played the first one twice, I think. I mean, from being, beginning to the end, right? Uh, but, uh, whew, and I'm, I still can't get over how bad they, they bungled the uh, end of Game of Thrones. I just can't believe it. I mean, one of the most popular beloved series of all time, right? And you can't, and they end it so badly that people are now hating on the entire series, hate, uh, you know, burning their, their damn, uh, 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 Blu-ray sets. I mean, this, mm-hmm. that's how bad they screwed up. It was it's drowning little... their children that they named Khaleesi. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, think about how many <laughs> idiots named their kids Daenerys or Khaleesi. I mean, God, uh, yeah, stupid. apparently Khaleesi was a very popular one, not Daenerys, but Khaleesi. That's Khaleesi, so tacky. Yeah. It is tacky, Ugh. yeah. Uh, but I'm just saying, I I, I I don't know if I can think of a bigger debacle. I mean, the end of Dexter was really bad. Uh, you know, it's a legendary failure. Uh, of course, the end of uh, Lost, people were not happy. Another uh, well-known one, uh, Sopranos, etc. Uh, but uh, I don't think anybody's as screwed up as much as uh, Game of Thrones guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's 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 epic, it's man. global. Yeah, yeah it is. Everybody global. around the world. It is. Are right. heating on that season. Well, you know, well, Holmes, like the mistake they made was that they thought they can just get away with it because they they thought, okay, it's just the fans. It's not, you know, normal people. Game of Thrones is the first property that actually has encompassed not only you know geeks, but also normal people. Yeah. And that's the problem: the geeks and the normal people. It's not 50%. It's 100% of your audience that you pissed off. It's not 50% of your audience. And you know, they, they piss everybody off, yeah. 
Well, here's yeah, the thing, that George. 100%, that hundred percent is going to come after wherever they go. They're going to take their their stick to Star Wars. That stigma is going to follow. Yeah. Now, uh, aggressively relaxing. <laughs> cool name, dude. He says Alpha is still the champion of bad endings. I agree. The alpha is really bad. Uh, but here's the mm-hmm. thing, though, George. Um, see, I a lot of people are accusing them of half-assing it because they wanted to run over and do the Star Star Wars thing. I don't think so, though. I think with the I think they didn't have uh, Martin involved at all in the ending bit, bit. And I thought that I think that that was their legitimate effort to truly end it. I think they literally gave their best effort, and that is what is worrying me. Well, Unless, it, yeah. whether, whether you consider it their best effort or half-assing it, they fumbled the ball, period. They did. They, 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 they did not take the approach on what has happened before and actually produce good product. They, they, they literally took a 180-degree on every storyline that for the last eight years everyone was following religiously and w- wanting to know more, mm-hmm. following Dan- and Daenerys, following Jon Snow, following uh, the kid assassin, and everybody else. And, and they literally did a 180 degree turn on seven, eight years of storytelling. Yeah, I know. That, that is not fumbling the ball, that is yeah. total, complete incompetence. It is, and that's the problem, I think, George. And, uh, you know, uh, the problem they're also running into with KOTOR, uh, people have been begging for this for decades, right? Well, yeah, decades, actually. And uh, uh, the thing is, is it's it's incredibly beloved. And if you screw up uh, the Knights of the Old Republic, boy, the backlash is going to be hard. Um, and um, Bill makes an interesting comment here. He says, can you name a series that ended well? Sure, I can. All in the Family, MASH, Stargate. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. There are plenty of shows that ended really well. Babylon Five. Yeah, Babylon, Babylon 5, Five ended really well. Yeah. Deep Space Nine. Deep Space Nine. Uh, Star Trek: The Next Generation ended really well too. Um, uh, there are plenty of series that ended really well. Uh, it, it's just the 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 handful or so that ended really badly we remember. Uh, because it's it, it, it was such a lost opportunity, right? Uh, matter of fact, if you if you go to push me on what the the best ended show uh, and therefore the best in, encapsulated show of all time, of course, All in the Family, I think is probably the best show that ever was ever made as far as you know TV drama. Uh, but um, uh, I'd say Mash. I think Mash was a perfect little uh, run and ending. It was beautiful. Cowboy Bebop ended great mm-hmm. too. Yeah, good good point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I know I'm, I'm coming from some of this stuff being quite old, but honestly, if you haven't seen All in the Family or MASH, I mean, I know the other stuff we mentioned is more modern. You guys probably know that. But if you haven't checked out those two shows, go do so, because they are really well done. Amazing TV. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and DS, DS9 ended really well. It did, Bill. Yeah. Battlestar Galactica. Uh, well, um, now, are you talking about the mm. original or are you talking about the remake, right? Uh, I, I think is well the, the original. The original never actually got a chance to end it properly. No, it didn't. Yeah, yeah that's why it I'm asking. Canceled. Um, um, Thunder Arrow says, "Hey, I'm playing that game right now. Uh, I don't know which one it is, but uh, one of the things we Imagine mentioned. Me, he, oh, yeah. I think it's All in the Family. He's playing that All in the Family game right now. Is what he's doing. I'm sure. There's an All in the Family game. No, no. dude, I'm being sarcastic. Yeah. Uh, no, facetious, even. Um, but uh, see, the problem with Battlestar Galactica, though, we are getting a little off topic, but uh, it's okay. Uh, I didn't like the remake of Battlestar Galactic. It just didn't sit with me well. What did you guys what think part? of it? I what didn't. Part? I didn't like them making the the uh, uh, Cylons uh, replicants. I didn't like it. I just didn't like it. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, because they had their own uh, robot overlord situation going on, right? We didn't need to take and make them human just so you could put more actors and actresses on the screen and create this uh, cheap, uh, cheap uh, drama and, and tension. I didn't like it at all. I was very much against it. Now, uh, of course, taking Starbuck and making it a female, which is one of the early SJW moves we've seen, uh, I still don't approve of it because why should you do that? There's no need to do that. But I have to say that the lady who did play Starbuck was pretty awesome. She was cool. Mm-hmm. She's a good actress. She did a good job. Uh, yeah, but, 
she was absolutely terrific and she, she would have played a great captain marvel she would have yeah and actually i prefer her a lot more in uh, uh in um Oh, what's that Western? Uh, it's kind of out in the Midwest uh, cop show where she plays like the deputy or something like that. Uh, Longmire? Longmire. Longmire. Yeah, she does. I like her better than that, I think. Um, but, um, uh, you know, and, and the problem with her in Battlestar Galactica, she had to be the tough guy, right? The dyke type of character. And it's like, I hate that when they do that. Women can be tough and capable all on their own while being women. You don't have to make a female character male in order for them to be a successful action hero. I just don't understand. Scarlett Johansson is a perfect example. There's nothing masculine about her. She doesn't fight in a masculine way. She fights as a woman would fight, right? Mm-hmm. And, and they killed uh, her off. And uh, oh, have, have they? Oh, yes, they did. Oh, you're right. They did kill mm-hmm. her off. Spoilers! Spoilers. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Denali. Uh, but uh, another uh, interesting example recently, I think, that uh, is very telling. Uh, we saw in John Wick 2 uh, that uh, little Ruby, that teeny little girl, uh, that uh, the mute that, uh, that uh, John fights at the end of the movie, mm-hmm. she fights as a woman of that size would fight. And it was beautiful. It was, and she, and she got, and when he got his hands on her, he chucked her all over the place, just like he does uh, the little people in the uh, uh, in the third movie too, from the raid. Uh, but <laughs> the uh, little they, people. Well, I'm just saying, <laughs> she she fought. They had her choreographed as a woman would fight in that situation. And it worked really well. Then we saw the Batwoman trailer, and they had her basically manhandling people as if she was a six foot three man. And that's not what she mm-hmm. is. She's a scrawny little thing with little teeny legs. She would not fight that way. She would fight for angle, advantage. She would use her equipment, uh, you know. And it's weird that they did go with such a little lady because uh, we know in the in the comic book, Batwoman is a pretty big chick. Actually, she's not small at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but but it's, it shows you right there with the same exact actress, we have a proper use of her and an, and then an improper use of her, uh, and it's nonsense. And uh, Chester is spoiling John Wick three. I, I didn't do anything. That's that's Danelle. He's the spoiler. No, no one said that John Wick dies in the third movie. Jeez, get over yourself. Yeah, no, no one said that. That doesn't happen. Definitely doesn't happen. Ah, right. <laughs> uh, she was a good villain in the short-lived Bionic Woman reboot. Interesting, interesting. Um, yeah. And, you know, uh, I liked Bionic Woman when it first came out. I saw that uh, reboot, and it was all right. Uh, but the, the problem is, it's it's the silly silliness of the remake. If you're going to bring back Bionic, then bring uh, bring back the uh, you know uh, the Bionic uh, six million dollar man. Don't bring back Bionic Woman. You can introduce her and spin her off if you have a successful show like they did in the in originally, but you can't start with that. No one's interested in it. We want to see the six million dollar man. Is what we want to see, and that's why that movie, that's why that TV show died instantly. Because it wasn't what well, people want. <laughs> is six million dollars going to get you much in a well these days? Or? Well, um, that was a fun <laughs> show though, dude, and uh, that was a mega toy hit as well. Uh, uh, you hmm. know, I don't know if you guys watch any of these uh, uh, shows that talk about uh, nostalgia and toys and things like that. I've, I, there's actually some very interesting uh, YouTube channels on that. Uh, but um, uh, I grew up during that, and Steve Rogers was you know, one of the coolest things ever, dude. And I had the little play set and I had everything like that. I mean, I loved, I loved Steve Rogers. That was like one of my favorite toys of all time. Um, and uh, I would love to see them bring that back in a serious way. Now, we know, we did cover on this show uh, that they're bringing a comic book back. And I think it's already uh, issue, uh, the f- first few issues are already <clears throat> out, right? Chester. Yeah. It's Steve Austin. I did say oh, Steve oh, Austin. What are you talking about? You said Steve, Steve Rogers. Oh, well, I made him in a we mistake. All heard. And we all know it's Steve Austin. I'm sorry. Uh, but, um, yeah, I love that, man. Thank you for correcting mm-hmm. me. Um, mm-hmm. And my dog seems to be interested in something. What's going on? Okay. All right, fine. Um, anyway, uh, let's move on from this. Uh, well, let me see here. We got this story. Oof. Uh, we have this one. And then we have that one. Well, let's mention this real quick. Uh, this is from George, actually. He wanted to put this up. And uh, um, uh, this is uh, Mark Brooks' uh, cover for Captain Marvel number nine. Uh, and what uh, George wanted to show off here is that uh, she's completely covered from toe to toe, but at least she's drawn in a sexy way. This is kind of a, uh, a take of uh, Spider Woman, I feel. 
uh, type of stance. And of course, we have a different, uh, the villain, I would assume, here in the reflection uh, of this thing. But uh, I don't know. Is this a good piece of art, though? Is it? Eh. Well, that's pretty good. So. It's all right. I yeah. think it is. It's all right. It looks, it looks good. She looks like a woman, not like uh, a dyke. Well, it's true. That, that's a fair point in that. But uh, we do know they've been trying to walk Captain Marvel back from that. Well, they, well, they've been trying to do that for a while, actually. Uh, so, uh, okay, cool. Well, rock mm -hmm. on. You go, Mark Brooks. Uh, but, um, yeah, it's it's not that. still not exciting to me, <laughs> you know. But whatever. Anybody have any comment on this before I leave it? No, well, not really. It's, yeah. Wait, is, it, is, this, is this the 12th title or is this still the 11th title? Uh, yeah, I don't know. it's ridiculous, right? Uh, I haven't oh. seen Endgame either. Oh, I do apologize. Would you like me to spoil it for you so you don't go Stone Cold Steve Austin? Give him hell, yeah. You know, Stone Cold is awesome, uh, dude. I love freaking Steve Austin. That dude is cool. Uh, but I'm talking about the original Steve Austin. That was a really cool show. A lot of fun. He even fought Bigfoot. It was cool. All right. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> Denali, money has been made. Absolutely. John Wick Chapter 3 is now top box office with a $181 million earned globally, meaning it made a $75, uh, $75 million budget. Excuse yep. me. Yep. And no, it's, it's this show. This one is definitely in the black. Uh, without question, even after advertising, they're definitely in the black. So uh, rock on. That means we'll have we'll get more of them. And of course, I'm not going to spoil the movie if I may if I've seen it. I might not have seen it, but I won't spoil it. But they definitely left it in such a way that more is coming. <laughs> yeah, baby. Oh my God, Baba Yaga's coming, baby. Uh, I could gonna... always use more. I yeah. could always use more, Mister Week. You know what I'm waiting for is the Continental. Yeah, the TV show. Yeah, I would love to see yeah. that too. But you know what I think? This is my my guess for John Wick Four. Uh, this is my guess uh, at this uh, after uh, after possibly seeing the third one. Well, yeah, um, going off nothing since you haven't seen the third one okay, at that's all. Right, that's right. Yeah. I, I just, I'm just complete uh, speculation. Imaginary. Imaginary. Just skipping from two to four. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I I think what we might see is more of a shadow uh, type of uh, ninja type of uh, John Wick in the fourth one. I think we might see him being. Well, I think for the first time we're going to see John Wick doing what John Wick does, whereas up until this point it's just been this chaos of him uh, being caught up in it. But I think the fourth one, it's going to be, it's going to be behind the scenes. He's going to be, you know, uh, taking uh, his revenge and doing the stuff he's got to do. But it's going to be very much uh, ninja-like. I have a feeling. Uh, I think it's going to be cool, actually. And um, John Wick is pissed off. He is pissed off, and as he should be. Uh, and uh, yeah, you know the the cool thing uh, about uh, John Wick Three. I, I think I said this already, but I'll, I'll say it again. Um, that movie, um, it 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 uh, subverted your spec uh, expectations in the right way. That in movie did not go or end in any way I expected it to. Not at all. But I loved it. Right, so it's uh, now, if, here's if a, I've here's seen a it. question. Mm -hmm. Here, here's a question. Then, do you suspect that they will focus on John Wick on if if it's going that direction that you know may or may not go to that direction? Mm -hmm. Um, would they focus on John Wick or would they fo focus on another assassin hunting John Wick and seeing mm -hmm. through this no. new assassin's eye while John Wick is fighting in the background? No. No, I don't think so. I think what we're going to see is uh, him and his uh, collaborators, which I will not, uh, I will not spoil anything. But I think we'll see him behind the scenes cleaning house. Actually, I, that's what I think. That's what I would do. Uh, but then again, they completely subverted my expectation in the third movie. So who knows where they'll go? And it was a wonderful, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, subversing of my expect expectations as well. Uh, I, I thoroughly loved it. I kept saying, why? They, well, how, why? Why? But then uh, then I sat back and said, all right, then rock on. Let's see where this goes. It was pretty cool. Um, uh, uh, it was a fun movie for sure. I'm glad to see they're making money. Yep. John Wick 4. She don't need no man. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, this is a male film and they're not they're not doing that nonsense. Thank God. Uh, and then I guess the last little bit of news we have here uh, is this. Yeah, from Cosmic Book News, Disney 
to farm out Captain Marvel to IDW. So IDW has licensee right to make comics for little kids and Spider-Man, everything. Spider-Man, things like that, yeah. So yeah. Uh, so what we'll see here, and to see this cover, if this is the cover they're going to go with, I don't know. Uh, but uh, mm-hmm. we're seeing they're doing more kitty. They got the cat in there. Yay. Um, I think this will probably be less SJWE. Uh, and it's kind of interesting that they made her a little chunky in the middle, very wide hipped and, uh, and rather large, large breasted in this. It's kind of like the opposite of what they've been doing, especially because she's a bit chunky, right? She's a bit kind of fat, fat. Thick. In fact. She's thick. Yeah. Uh, but, um, I don't know. Do you think what this would be less that? SJW nonsense or more? Since oh, it's going to be full on. Who's the writer? Hmm. And do you think that uh, it being for kids stops it from being SJW? It when could. has that ever been the case? Look Sometimes. at Cartoon Network cartoons coming out of the Cal Arts. It's all SJW nonsense. It's... Oh, that damn... oh it's a cat. It's so quirky. Don't you love cats? Piss off. <laughs> just, I'm sorry. <laughs> Something about Goose the Cat just pisses me off. I think it's to do with Nick Fury's eye, but oh, yeah. well, that was silly. Talk about building something up and then absolutely wasting it. I mean, you uh, know that, that some dumb. feminist dickhead came along and just thought it would be so quirky and adorable if the cat scratched out his eye. Argh. Well, you saw the little scene that they uh, they act. Oh my God, I'm seeing who's writing this. This is scary. Uh, all right, um, uh, but you saw the little deleted scene that came out yesterday, and uh, all the uh, people covered it, where uh, uh, Captain Marvel basically is threatening to rip a dude's hand off uh, if he doesn't give her her uh, his jacket and motorcycle. She basically mm-hmm. is a thief stealing and threatening people. Uh, but then again. I like to think- that's why it was a deleted scene. I, I probably was, but this is the problem with a lot of these SJW characters is they are more villain than they are hero. Right? Well, a lot of the feminists thought that scene was delightful as well, and they actually compared. Why is it okay if the Terminator does that? Because, because he's, a he's a villain robot. He's a freaking assassin <laughs> robot. What are you talking about, right? It's so stupid. <sighs> because they did take it right out of Terminator. You're right, but he's a yeah. bad guy. He's the he, yeah. the antagonist. <laughs> you right. don't get to steal someone's property just because they uh, said smile. Okay, look, it was creepy. <laughs> he came up to her and uh, what put down the newspaper and it said, "How about small love?" But no one does that. Mm-mm. No one does that. Yep. And you, th- this only happens in your weirdo oppression fantasies. So it's like mm, I hope a man says something bad to me today so I can smack him around and be heroic and everyone on the street can clap. I hate these people are just. They're all they are. stupid. They are. I'm going to read this paragraph, and we're all going to cringe together. Are we ready? Are we ready to cringe? I, I, I already cringed. I'm go, well, okay. we're, go, we're going to cringe. Here we go. San Diego, California, May 22nd, 20, uh, 2019. IDW Publishing is proud to announce the latest addition to their Marvel action line of comics aimed at middle-grade readers. Well, that's a nice way to put it. Uh, Captain Marvel from the stellar creative <laughs> team of writer Sam Maggs. Marvel, fearless and fantastic. Female superhero saves the world. Artist Sweeney Boo, My Little Pony. Uh, and colorist what kind of name is Sweeney Boo? Peer, uh, first thrilling chapter hits stores in August. <sighs> okay. Sweeney uh, Boo! <laughs> Here we go, here we go. Carol Danvers. <laughs> what a name! <laughs> it is a name, That's dude. A uh, character. Uh, but actually, it is cute art, which Sweeney Boo does. Uh, but uh, I don't know if it's really Captain Marvel ready. But I mean, it might be okay. I, I, I have less trouble with Sweeney Boo than I do Sam Maggs, actually. Right? That's mm-hmm. the real cringe. Uh, but uh, Carol yeah. Danvers, Quiet Night with... Uh, Best friend forever, Jessica Drew, Spider Woman, uh, takes a catastrophic turn when Manhattan's uh, uh, bodegas are suddenly overrun by a host of angry felines. And not just any felines, Flurkins, the most terrifying, pocket dimension holding, tentacle devouring, kitty lookalikes in the entire universe. Can Captain Marvel overcome the formidable, or what is it? Yeah, formidable foes before it's too late? Oh, I'm sure she can. Uh, and uh, this is from Mr. Sam Mags, and I say I use that word very loosely. Uh, I feel so privileged to help launch Captain Marvel's solo title for Marvel Actions. Okay, Car- Carol has always been my favorite superhero. I love how she's truly come into her own culturally and is 
finally being widely recognized as the star that she is, being a able to write for Carol is the most exciting and terrifying thing that's ever happened to me. I can't wait to share this arc with everyone. Yeah, Car- <laughs> Carol Danvers has been a, a character since what? The 80s? Uh, right, yeah. Well, earlier and, than that, dude. Or earlier and this that. version that's apparently uh, finally being widely recognized as the star that she is has been around since what, did, a few years. Did you like my... This uh, version of her is very new. Did you like my interpretation of Sand Mags? Did you like that? Was I, that it was it was perfect. It was perfect. Yeah, it, it was, was absolutely perfect. <laughs> it was it was. I uh, uh yeah. Oh, I wanted to run away there and close my legs. Oh goodness gracious. Well here is Sweeney Boo says. So Booster, give us the proper what what does Sweeney Boo sound like? Sweeney Boo well I Googled my little Sweeney pony, Boo yeah. and and my little pony well I Googled Sweeney Boo and Sweeney Boo has a um a fat disorder book of some kind, so I'm going to assume she's a fatty. You know? Oh, no, she's actually a little cutie. I'm looking her up now. Oh, hello, Sweeney Boo. Mm, I anyway, <clears throat> anyway, so Sweeney Boo is going to sound something along the lines of, <clears throat> this comic is for everyone. If you have seen Captain Marvel's movie and want more of her, and if you're a cat lover, this is definitely for you. This title has everything. It's funny and sweet. It has powerful moments and it's absolute cat madness okay so sweeney's all about the cat not about captain marvel all right uh what does the chat say i can the feel soy again. radiating from chester well i, I a mission uh, accomplished mm-hmm. i guess uh the, yeah, uh, the willie mammoth says okay chester is too good at that yo at that voice yo yeah <laughs> yeah success success uh awesome uh but uh i don't know dude we'll see uh i don't mind the sweeney boo because i think they've done a great job with my little pony actually they've done a really good job with that uh, series for the, you know for the kids who who enjoy that uh, they're lucky all right uh but this sam mags guy uh like i said uh you know uh l- let's see if we can find a picture of sam let's show you what sam looks like here one second. now understand this is not mags visaggio right this is a different person okay here we go sam this is mags. a different mags. comic book okay comic right. oh what oh, oh here we go what? Why does this person look kind of like? Oh, look kind of like a hot Mags Visage. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, uh, not showing us any picture there. Uh, oh yes, here we go. Now, is this a dude, or is it not a dude? Is this a dude, or is it not a dude? I guess it doesn't really matter, I suppose. Sam Mags is a writer, geek girl. Oh my god, she actually has a geek girl on her own. <laughs> I think it is an actual chick, though. It it is actually a whammon. I think so. Yes. Yeah. Well done. But anyway, uh, if we come back over and we see what has been created, though, which this is the, the interesting thing. Uh, new book. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, shouldn't they have like an, uh, just something as a list of all their stuff? Uh, let me type that in. Um, comic books list, maybe? Oh, here we go. Uh, is this right? Maybe? No, this isn't right. That's not right. We definitely don't want that. No, no, that's not right. No, no, no. Stop it. What are you, okay. what are you doing? What, I'm are you, what are you doing? For, I'm looking for Sam Mags. Is, is, uh, uh, oh, here we go. Let's see what this says. <clears throat> of the Mary uh, the Pop Sue. Culture Diet. Why Sam Mags of the Mary Sue is the ultimate uh, fan girl. Now, here's the, here's the thing. She okay. writes for the Mary Sue. She does. Orin, knock it off. What are you doing? Leave the kids alone. Uh, all right. Uh, goodness gracious, dude. Uh, all right. So uh, this is going to be an absolute uh, trash fire. Holy cow. Oh, this is brutal. Look what we found. Look at what we found. A Mary Sue writer <laughs> has been hired by uh, has been hired by Marvel. I think it's the first one, right? Hmm. But we also know she does write, actually write uh, stories and comic books and such. That's Probably true. YA novels, I bet. Probably. Uh, but, mm. um, <sighs> all right, fine. Uh, we had to end on that today. I don't see anything else here is going to save the day, so uh, I do apologize. Yeah, I'm miserable now. Yeah, Thank now you. I'm just miserable. <laughs> I didn't, a lot well, I didn't expect the car. 
I never expected a Captain Marvel book to be good anyway, but they just keep going down this road. They will not give up on this terrible character. Yeah. That nobody likes. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, uh, it is what it is, and uh, we just have to live with it. Uh, but uh, anybody have anything to add to end of this day? Happy Memorial Day. <laughs> Happy Memorial Day. Yeah, see, I lose track of time, though, because uh, I didn't even know it was a Memorial Day until I watched uh, Jeremy this morning, and uh, he said, Happy Memorial Day. And I was like, oh, thank you, Jeremy. Uh, can, can, I don't can, even know if I remember we... what Memorial Day is for. It's to honor the sacrifices of our soldiers. I thought that was Veterans Day. Yeah, but this is for the Civil War, and it um, kind of became Memorial Day. I see. What do you say, George? It's our... George? George? George died. I'm sorry. I'm Hi, no, George. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, here he is. Can, can we pull up any picture of the original Star Wars movie, A New Hope, or any picture of our wonderful soldiers, um, like the f flag raising at Iwo Jima? Just uh, let's leave on a happy note, because okay. that, mm -hmm. last, uh, that last news was terrible. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it brought down the mood. It did, it did. And uh, Everyone Bob impressed. says, thanks, Chester. You gave us cancer of the soul. Well done. I do apologize. Mm -hmm. I do apologize That's a special Bob. kind of canker. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, uh, while I'm going and looking for that picture, uh, uh, Denali, uh, why don't you uh, let them know what's going on tomorrow, actually. We're going to have some fun tomorrow. Denali? Where's Denali? Yes, I'm here. Doing? I'm here. I'm here. I'm just drinking some water. <laughs> You know, um, but I was saying that what Chester was asking is tomorrow is going to be Bugs Bear Basement where we're going to be playing Vampire the Masquerade, which is going to be awesome. Um, be advised that it's going to be for mature audience, so there might be a lot of swearing and evil things done to imaginary people and things and places. Um, so viewer <laughs> discretion is advised uh, for that show. Yeah, um, but it's gonna be fun though. <clears throat> but it's gonna be awesome, and it's gonna be shenanigans, and I'm excited to see what things gonna happen. Um, Bunny Vision Movie Night's gonna be on Wednesday. We're gonna be watching uh, Godzilla attack all monsters. Ooh, getting ready, getting ready. Godzilla, yeah. King of Monsters, is coming, and it's gonna be awesome. I hope so. Anyway, uh, but awesome. uh, I, I am sharing uh, the. Uh, uh, that wonderful memorial uh, um, memory of us uh, lifting the flag here in Iwo Jima. So uh, I feel better already. It's nice. Hug your loved ones, yes. Uh, right. Eat a baby, day one. No, no, we shan't be doing that at all. Uh, but uh, anyway, Ooh. guys, uh, thank you very, very much. Uh, and um, yeah, we're going to have a fun week. Uh, we have a lot of things planned. we got some guests coming up this week, of course. Uh, we have all the different shows we're doing. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the uh, topic is going to be for Drone Recorded Fan Edition this week. Uh, I think I need to go talk to Pixel because I think it would be better if we promoted that uh, during the week more than just simply, we'll see what it happens in the day. I don't know. So Sometimes yes, yeah. sometimes no. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, thank you guys and uh, uh, love you guys coming in here and sharing with us. It's a lot of fun. And uh, Denali, take us out, dude. Well, thank you, Chester. Um well, to begin with, um, we have uh, my newsletter for this upcoming project that I'm working on, which is called The Immortal Mass. Join my newsletter at denalicomics at gmail.com um, so you can be up to date to any information and sneak peeks and secret perks and other fun stuff that is brewing in my mind. Um, it's going to be awesome. I'm excited for it. I hope you guys are excited for it as well. Mm -hmm. um, but as always, your perception shapes your reality, so always make it a good one. Namaste. 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 Later, guys. Thank you. Aloha.